here we are back again 2023 the reigning champs the reigning champions of the fitness industry jason fernandez jason ackerman best hour of their day right here fern where's your you told me that it's on the wall where it should be right here nikki sharp you know what's up here we are tag team champions of the world and we have a very 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 special guest very special guest katie since we're on wrestling katie if you champion. did find yourself champion in the ring in a wwe match what would your stage name be Ooh. oh my gosh oh good question I used to go by jumping. Jason. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you. You didn't give me any me. time to prepare that answer. That's all right. I wanted to jump. Jumping back to that Jason Ackerman. We can, we can we can circle back to it. Okay. Um, back in the day, you're a young kid. You have to get it. You have to alliterate. And Jay does. There's not a lot of Jays. Jumping joyful doesn't really strike fear in people's eyes. Jarring. Ooh, I was too young. I didn't. I still, to be quite honest, don't know what that means. But definitely didn't know what it meant in the third grade. All right. So today, let me put my hold on a sec. Let me put my championship belt down, guys. Oh, so you remember when we talked about earlier about the, him not making it about him? We, we, made, we made it exactly <laughs> seven, sec I wasn't on seven for that. seconds into the show. And, I wasn't and on for that. Yep. All right. We're going to talk nutrition today. However, there's some big things going on. What are you pointing at? What are we pointing, I'm pointing at? I'm pointing at Katie based on yeah. where my screen is. Yeah. Um, that's right. Is you are you over in my closet? Are you in the closet? Uh, oh well, a God. lot of people may be watching this, talking about it, word on the street, registering this, for it, registering for it. This level four thing now, confirm or deny, you have taken the level four. Just to confirm, confirm it, I've taken it. Yeah, confirm. I have taken it. Yes, I've taken it. Now, confirm or deny you failed. I confirm that I did not fail. <laughs> so you deny. Correct. You deny you failed. Right. But look, you don't have to come on a show and brag. Are you <laughs> bragging right now that you have passed the level four? I mean, it's a pretty big deal. Look at, I mean, you brag about it all the time. So I feel like. Well. He actually has nothing to brag about. He's actually never passed the level four taken. test. Yeah, I got to no. hold on a sec. Yeah. One of two. Level four. Yeah. <laughs> it's an act. And one of two. There's two level fours. So we're going to talk. I want to talk a little bit about this. Are you okay with that? Are you allowed to? Is is Are we going to get, is uh, Don Fall <laughs> going to yell at you? Is it hold Don on. Before, before we do that, before Jason's got us off the rails. If you are watching this. Smash, smash the like button smash it like smash it Don't and put a comment in there this is in fact episode six, six. zero zero i can't believe i've talked to you 600 oh. times fern 600 oh i okay. wish it was i wish it was 600 less times but here we are <laughs> and, and like fern said like hey but more important than that subscribe subscribe subscribe, subscribe. we'll wait for you we're gonna wait we'll wait two hours later you have better have subscribed. Subscribe to the subscribe to the show. <laughs> All right. But let's hear a little bit about it. Was it nerve wracking? Yeah. I mean, I can definitely talk about my experience. I can't give away too much about the process necessarily. Candidates will learn the process when they sign up. So it was extremely nerve wracking. It was. There's an echo, number one. Oh. Well, she's frozen. And it's Jay's computer because the echo is coming because she's frozen. That's not me. It's definitely you. What do you mean? I don't hear it. Because it's you. <laughs> Am I still frozen? No, you're unfrozen. No. You're no longer frozen. Well, what we have figured out, everybody, is that in 2023, we can't get our audio and visual sorted out. So Tell us what you were going to say, Katie. What I was going to say is, well, number one, if you take this seriously and you take your job seriously as a coach and you go in wanting to pass this thing, you should be nervous. 
I mean, there's no other way about it, even if you've been doing this for years. And you you have a little bit of what to expect, of course, because they set you up with the expectations, but there's always so much unknown and unknowable when you're going into a facility that's not yours. So to prepare for every single scenario you can possibly think of, that's I think that's the nerve wracking part. Um, so it, I was, and you know, you're sitting there being evaluated by the best in the business. It's, it's, it's a lot. So it was a really cool experience, but yeah, I was absolutely nervous for sure. I'll ask this question, somebody that wants to do this, mm -hmm. what do you recommend that they do to prepare? Cause I've gotten many DMS, uh, and this is going to sound a little weird an alarming number of DMs of people that have registered for this that I think have prematurely thrown their hat in the ring. Now I could be wrong. They could all, I, and I hope I eat crow on this. I hope they all come in. They're just like, course, yeah. you're an idiot. I passed. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, right. I agree with you, Ziggler. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, there is no more echo now that Jay's muted, by the way. Correct. That's why it was yeah. telling him. Am I echo? Is there an echo now? It's not an echo when you talk. Now there's no echo. You did you switch yeah. your speaker? I didn't do anything, Cody. Okay. Cody. I'm, well, either I'm way, I'm getting a bad rap. I'm gonna throw it out there. You guys planned this against me. Correct. No, you don't need our help to get a bad rap. But yes, we did plan against you. But Katie, somebody that's that is th they're like I'm doing it. I think that people should take a moment of pause. Like you're nervous. I I am going to be nervous when I do it. Full disclosure. Mm -hmm. Like I'm confident, but. I'm going to be doing more preparing than yeah. I probably normally would. 100%. It's to prepare for this, of course, you have to be, not only do you have to be coaching at, at, at a, you know, a high volume in terms of classes, you have to be coaching with intention. You have to coach like every single class is your level four evaluation. And yeah, the preparation. So I put a certain amount of preparation when I coach my classes, of course, but I went way beyond in the preparation for this, because again, it's not, you're not going into your own facility where you know everybody and you know where everything is. And it's just, it's beyond that. So yeah, I think people need to, people need to really think about, this isn't just, well, I coach all the time. So, you know, I've been coaching for 10 years, so I'm good. That, that's not it. it does, it's not about how long you've been coaching. It's about how much intention you put behind your classes. And yeah, I, I don't think you should take it lightly. It's it's really hard and I, it's very challenging. I think it's going to be similar to this. And this is for the old heads out there to the old level two. Oh, the one I passed. I don't know. I guess I can't speak to that because I, I didn't. I started yeah, cross. It was it. fucking but hard. It, no one passed except for me in the right, entire world. Challenging because there was nothing else like it. I mean, yeah. it, nobody knew what to expect. Now I think hopefully I think coaches are in general way better than they were back then because we just know more. It, you know I, what I mean? We, we've done it so wrong for a long time that we've been able to get better. But well, those, and you, those tests were too different, right? So like the, the different, the, did you, Katie, did you take it? Cause like, I, I was like, I, it went away like right before. Same. same for right me. after right I passed it. Level one. Right after I passed it. They got yeah, they were like, well, if this guy made it, it's clearly not a good test. We got to so. revamp the whole thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and it took 10 years to get to the point. But, but the so that was a different format. So that was more along the lines of like, could you coach a circle? I think this is significantly more challenging. I do too. Based on what I know about the old level too. Because it's, again, it's, it's not just coaching in a circle. I think that the six criteria are just on a way bigger platform when you're at a different facility with people you've never met. Um, I, it seems like it would be more challenging because there's just so many more factors that go into it. Well, it's, it's the purest form of like, can you do this? Like it, it, there's just no, there's no hiding in there's this no hiding. format. Like you're either good at this, you're either yeah. like really good at it or you're not. And, and however, here's, and then we can move on, but I just, I wanted to bring this up because this is important and Katie, you just took it. So you have, I, and I'd like to get both of your thoughts. I think this is really good for the community because I think the community at large needs to be calibrated on what good coaching is and looks like. Yeah. Okay. 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 Are you two done? Are you two done with this? 
You brought it up. Because you are, are you so wrong. Out? Are you feeling left out? I'm not feeling left out. I just cannot believe two people that I've known for so long and consider friends, if I'm being frank, are so dumb. I can't <laughs> believe it. I cannot believe this. I mean, I expected this of Fern, if I'm being honest. I expected it of Fern. Not from you, Katie. Not from you. Hey, do you think you can go and take the level four exam right now and like just walk, like, you know? Well, first of all, out of the park? I would put some pants on. I would put some pants on and then I would go. And yes, I can pass it in this flannel that's got a loose button. I would still I pass it. I think you're it. overconfident on this. I mean, you need to take oh, a really? couple Well, here's, here's what I suggest. I'm going to put your phone. Can we give your phone number out? And we're going to give your phone number out. Everybody that has any questions about this, just give Katie a text or a phone call. Ooh. Yeah, Sign I agree. Hammer. It's going to be like a duel. Jeff, Ooh. I'm already taking it. Dueling and if it, listen, player. we should get, uh, listen, if we can. Up? No, they were originally going to uh, host it here, but then it's Atlanta okay. and I'm not signed up for it because it's just like, I haven't found it. Like, I don't even know where I would do that. Um. <clears throat> I was thinking about like trying to get it, like trying to get them to come to the gym because it's like me, Cassidy, Lindsay, and we would just do oh, it. Look over at me. Gyms, just come to me. Just stuff. come to me, Nicole. Nicole Carroll. Hey, come to us. She's not actually showing up. Back in anyway, <laughs> nutrition. All right. And well, segue. And segue. And here we go. So, why do you guys think this is a couple months ago? Cross would put out. Fitness in 100 words. You remember that post on Instagram? Yeah. You've, you've heard of fitness in 100 words, Katie? I've heard of it. Yeah. You've heard of it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to dive into this. Eat meat. Eat meat Vegetables. and nuts and whatnot. Yes. Nuts. And whatnot, I think, Some is fruit, the next sugar. word. Got it. Okay. However, at the end of that sentence, no sugar and the internet lost their minds. Now, <laughs> here's the thing. Katie Hayes... I always refer to you as Katie Powell, your maiden name. Cody yeah. was like, who's Katie Powell? I was like, it's Katie Hayes. <laughs> it was like, who's on first? Because um, you're still on my phone. I never change people's names. So here's what people don't know about you. Level four, some people know this, but yes, amazing coach. The argument can be made whether the old level four is more prestigious, whatever. You've also lost 100 pounds. Yeah. That's why I reached out to you because – you, I mean, I love you. You're a good friend, but you have a great story. You've lost a hundred pounds and you know, that's, you know, who better to talk nutrition than someone's that's been through the ringer. And I blows my mind every time people like get so angry at this no sugar thing. Why does this happen? I mean, my first thought is it's like anything else. When people hear something that they just don't like, they're going to lose it. I, you know, I don't want to give up sugar. I want to just, I want to justify why it's okay to have sugar. Well, sh there's, there's sugar in fruit. So should we not have fruit? It's like, come on, that's not what people are overeating. They're not overeating fruit. So I, I think that's my first response is when people hear that it's because they just, people get real bent out of shape when they hear things that they don't want to hear. When you tell them, Hey, you might have to make a couple of changes to your diet or your lifestyle. You might have to sacrifice. You might have to be a little bit uncomfortable. They don't want to hear that. And when I say they, I mean globally, right? Like not everybody feels that way. Some people are ready to put in the hard work and that's great. But I think generally speaking, people are just like, well, that's, that's not what I want. And I can find a million other reasons on the internet why I can eat sugar and it's okay. Yeah. If well, you're pre-diabetic okay. uncle who you've been talking about eating right and exercising reached out to you and you're like, you know what, for new year's, I'm going to give up sugar. You'd be like, fuck yeah, let's do it. I'll do it with you. Yeah. Right. And then people are like, it always circles back to like, you know, well, there's people with disordered eating, which there are sure. by the way, the percentage of people with disordered eating is significantly lower than the obesity rates or people with type two diabetes or any other of the, um, you know, hyperinsulinemia or any other chronic disease out there. Disease, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, that's you, Katie. Yeah. Oh man. There's that is. six pack. Look at you. Look at you. The, um, little, uh, here's, 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 little, uh, your little niece. Yeah. That's my niece when she was just a little babe. Yeah. Like a teenager now. 
Chris Russell mm -hmm. a little one. The um, so here's where I think this is important. So like obviously this is where we're, we're breaking down the level one manual, and I think it's a good time. And I think I, I'm curious a little bit more. I know the, I know your story, Katie, but a little bit more specific to get into it. But like to kind of like revisit like the cross the CrossFit prescription for nutrition because this is something that I think regularly gets uh, or at least people try to overcomplicate. And this recently came up at a, at a seminar where somebody's like, what's your stance on this? And it's like, we don't have a stance on that. Our stance is this. Mm -hmm. We're like, we don't have to have a stance on that. We don't have to have a stance on all these other things. Like our stance is here. And I, and I, and I'd love to hear kind of like your journey. So when you started this journey, like what was your first step into the water? And then we can kind of like attach a lot of this to the content in the level one manual. Yeah. And we'll let you kind of lead the dance here, Katie. Okay, sure. So I started CrossFit. My very first CrossFit workout was in 2009, the end of 2009. And I just started with simply that going to showing up at CrossFit two or three times a week, maybe because I was very sedentary. I was very overweight. And, you know, I was lucky that I had my sister to sort of guide me through the process because it's it's scary walking into a CrossFit gym who owned the gym, correct? Yeah, my sister and her husband, Chris, owned the gym. Yep. And, um, but it didn't take me long to realize, you know, the workouts are hard, right? <laughs> You're suffering and it sucks. And I was like, man, I bet if I lost a little bit of weight, uh, this would be better. This wouldn't hurt quite so bad, right? And so I went to a nutrition talk by myself. My sister didn't go with me. I was just like, I'm going to go and sort of, be behind the scenes and just listen to this guy talk about nutrition at a Lululemon store in Jacksonville where I lived. And that guy was Justin Berg oh, wow. and he was the owner of CrossFit Southside at the time in Jacksonville. And he talked all about the zone diet. And I was like, I was so confused. <laughs> I'm like, this all sounds great, but I, I, I was, it was, a, it felt like a lot for me because I had never done anything like this in my whole life with nutrition. So then I went home and I told my sister about it. And she was like, yeah, the zone. I mean, back in 2009, you guys know the zone was it. Man. That was it. It was all the rage. That's oh, what we, Every That's member what that walked in, I vividly, Austin Maliolo, coach of mine, Nickelback came in. The band. What? They came into the gym. They were playing what? down the street. They gave us tickets. Nickelback rocks. For the record, like if you go see Nickelback in concert, you know every one of their songs. Look at this photograph. So anyway, I vividly remember we, they did a workout and Austin's sitting down with these guys teaching them about the zone. Yeah. It was crazy. That was yeah. it. I, went, I told Cody to bring this up again while you're talking because I mean, you are like the example, like people that are, you know, saying this thing about meats, vegetables or sugar, like you've done it like people can do this. And I think yeah. it's like anything, like if your mind is like, Oh, this is too hard and no sugar, this like, yeah, your members will believe that. But look yeah. at it. Like you cannot tell me like the person on the right is not a healthier hap Look at the happier person. Right. Well, forget the aesthetic and even the health part of it. I mean, talk about happiness and confidence just in as a human being and as a woman, I mean, my whole, life changed beyond just the physical weight loss part. Yeah. Some would even say you're cocky if I'm being honest. Like, what do you say to people that say, Katie Pet, you're cocky now? I don't think anybody has said that. Nobody. I've heard. I've heard. Zero people. <laughs> I said it. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so the, the, the zone was my introduction into this whole thing. But like, it's, and I'm sure we'll get into this because the zone is obviously a big part of the level one nutrition content. I had to start really, really basic and scaled with the zone diet. Um, once, once I grasped the, the bigger concepts of what it was in terms of a balance of macronutrients and the block system. And I had the, um, you know, the charts that have, here's your columns of protein and then your columns of carbohydrates. I had those printed out on the refrigerator so that I could make sense of it all. But I mean, I did a scaled version of the zone to start with because I just needed to kind of get, used to some sort of um, nutrition regimen because it was so new for me. So so let's take a step back. The mm -hmm. zone block system, depending on your, your lean body mass, your activity level, you get prescribed a certain amount of blocks. 
one block is protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Nine grams of carbohydrates, seven grams of protein, three grams of fat. It's challenging. It definitely is. I would guess when you started, you were probably like 12 or 13 blocker for a female. Yeah, I, I might have been even a little bit more than that to start with because I was bigger. So I didn't start with the block prescription of where I wanted to be necessarily. I just, just kind of started with where I was just, just to get a baseline. Right. Well, it was a huge step in the right direction, right? Yeah. Like you're going from like, look, we know you're addicted to soda. So you're probably going. Was, was. I'm not was. You still throw back a couple of DCs every I so will. Often. I will do a fountain DC sometimes. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, you doing 20 blocks would have been a step in the right direction. So, <laughs> you know, it, for the listeners studying the manual, nine carb, seven protein, three fat. You have to know those numbers. Yeah. Now, when you say you were scaling it, what does that mean? Uh, that means that I started with just zoning out one meal per day. Oh, wow. And and that's the awesome part of this. Like, yeah. you don't have to be like meats, vegetables, nuts, seeds, keep intake to levels, right? right? Like, hey, Katie, I mean, your sister, Megan, or Chris, or whoever, Justin, you know, telling us, hey, let's do breakfast. Like, yeah. you wake up. That was breakfast. Right. Yeah. You wake up, you're, you're ready to attack the day, start it right, and then eat whatever you want for lunch and dinner, right? How, right. how long did you do that for, Katie? Um, I probably did that for a few weeks, I would say. And then what was the next variation of that? It was just adding meals like, add, okay, now, now we're going to weigh and measure breakfast, lunch, and a snack, but then dinner, you can do whatever you want. So how long and, did it take you to go from one to all of them, at least for like a full day? Like where you're like, I scaled it. I, I, or like, not, I scaled, I zoned every meal today. Probably a couple months. Yeah. A couple months. And then I was weighing and measuring all my meals. Now I still did, you know, the cheat meal once a week or whatever, whatever it was at the time, I wasn't a hundred percent perfect a hundred percent of the time, but the, you know, the sort of like 90, 10 rule was where I lived once I got past that two or three month mark. Jay, where did you, did, what was your, was the zone? I, zone was the first thing I ever played with. What was the first thing you ever played with? No. So like Katie said, I took my level one, and Greg Glassman, you know, Coach Glassman's talking about this. And I was like, I'm going to do it. So the way we used to talk about it is, like Katie kind of said, where you jump off is less important than actually jumping off. Mm -hmm. But I think we've all given the old school nutrition lecture where we would say, you know, what's your gender? I know it's like, I don't know how to say this anymore. But okay. it used to be like, what's your gender? Cool. Look at the color of your shirt. What size does it say you are? So, um, you know, I, I looked at it and I was like, cool, I'm a medium. I was wearing mediums. I'm a, I'm a medium male. All right. And then we're going to talk about this. And I was like, okay, I did it. And I was making a tiny bit of progress, but I was, you know, some might say chunky. I would say like husky. I would say I was husky. Like no. <laughs> We've come full circle. We've come full circle. But no. So I was like, oh man, I'm not making progress. We talk about it. Give it three weeks. Give it 21 days. Cool. Let's drop down to a small male, which I believe was 16 blocks. Now, here we go. Cody's got it pulled up. Yeah, 16 blocks right there. So I went from 17 to 16, and I saw a little bit more progress. I was like, all right, I'm getting a little bit more lean, et cetera. It wasn't until doing the zone for another three weeks that I was like, oh, turns out I'm actually a well-muscled female because I had to do 14 blocks. I had to do 14 blocks before I made any progress. But the point was like, you got to start somewhere. I, would I have guessed I was a well-muscled female? No, but turns out I am. Yeah, we all knew that. The um, <laughs> Katie, Katie, when, uh, so going back to before you started. So Can you if, edit if that thinking, out, Cody? If, so if, if we're thinking about the, the, the flow of, can you just give like the big bullet points of the, of the nutrition lecture real quick so that we can do like a little bit of a story arc here. And then I want to go back to the beginning. Okay. So we talk about the, the pyramid, the hierarchy, right? And nutrition is at the base of that pyramid. And that's, it fuels everything that we do above that. We talk about what the problem is in terms of overeating and an excessive amount of carbohydrates and what that does to our, you know, our insulin and our hormones and how that creates this place of basically we're eating so much processed food, carbohydrates that We've got this massive insulin dump and we get to this place of hyperinsulinemia and what that's correlated to as we find, and there's obviously this is bullet points, chronic disease, right? 
this tidal of chronic disease, tidal wave. So that's a problem. And now how do we just get people moving in the right direction? If we're talking about the sick, well, fit continuum and a, a, a huge majority of the population sitting on the sickness side, how do we at least get them towards wellness? And what that prescription is, is eat meat, vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. And we talk about that being a really qualitative approach to food, macronutrients, micronutrients being balanced. We then shift into optimizing for health and performance and eating for, you know, to push us towards fitness, the fitness side of the continuum. And what that is, is bringing precision and accuracy into our diet, weighing and measuring our food so that we're eating the right amount of food to support our exercise and not body fat. There are a number of ways to do that. As we all know, I think now, I, we, I don't think people knew as much about this 12 years ago when I started CrossFit, it was the zone. That was it. And now there are so many, so many different platforms that you can weigh and measure your food. Okay, uh, cool. That so that's those. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was, uh, I was fully confident we were going to do. So if we go back to the beginning and I don't even know if you're aware of this. So if we, if we think about like, okay, you know, physiologically, here's the mechanisms within the body and here's what we know is going on. Tons of people over here in sickness. Do, were you dealing with any like health issues other than, I don't want to say other than, but like, obviously you're overweight at this point. Yeah. Were, did you, were you aware of, or did you have any other things that you were concerned about at the time? So I think that's the key is awareness. I, I can't say for certain because I was certainly just in denial and avoiding things like regular doctor's checkups and knowing my health markers. I mean, I had no idea of any of that stuff. So I could venture to guess that I was heading towards pre-diabetic. Um, I, I'm sh I know that, I, I guess I can't say for sure. I don't know objectively, but I'm sure my health markers were not in a good spot. And I know, I think I can say that subjectively because when I started to make progress and feel better, I felt different. I felt like a different human. You know what I mean? Just generally. So uh, yeah, I, I guess I can't say for certain that I had okay. any other issues, but yeah, I was just curious, like some people do old. and some people, yeah. And, yeah. and you, they, they may not have like manifested themselves yet, but it's probably a safe bet that, it, you know, you're right. Had we, had you done a, a blood panel, like it would not have been great. Right. Okay. Okay. So you start eating and then at this, you start eating in the zone, which is typically not where a lot of people start, but it is where some people start. It, it, if you're in the CrossFit space, at least back then it used to be. Um, and then typically if we work our way through the well, when we go from sick to well, what we're recommending is like, just eat better quality, you know, in air quotes, whole foods, not the yeah. store, like real food that rots. Yeah. Um, have you gone, um, cause you've done played with a lot of stuff. Have you gone? So you started with zone. Have you, what other stuff have you played with? Yeah, I think at the beginning when I, when I did start with the zone, I, I think I was simultaneously incorporating the qualitative approach of eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. I didn't, I didn't, I played with paleo eventually, but going back to the start, you know, I did things like, Hey, let's just um, try to cut out the, the liquid sugar, right? All the sugary drinks, the soda, and let's start to work more towards whole foods at the same time that I was learning about macronutrients and how to balance my breakfasts. Right. Right. Um, and, and so I think I was sort of building both of those things, weighing and measuring what is quality food look like. And then I reached a point where probably a year into CrossFit, I was weighing and measuring in zone quantities, but also, you know, eating whole foods, like whole a, food. a paleolithic kind of approach. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I do want to come back to that because that's typically the the sticking point, right? It's just like people are like, I need to eat better. And then we have this conversation about like, okay, now you're going to need to cut out sugar. And then it's just like, all right, these are fighting words. I yeah. took judo once and this is this is going to be a problem for both of us. Um, before we do that, I do want everybody to know, again, if you have not liked and subscribed to the YouTube channel, you should do both of those right now. Also, some big things are coming. In Best Hour, Affiliate you. Uh, notification. You do have a slight window to set up a call to discuss whether we can help you because prices are going to be changing. So if you do want prices for 2022, set up a call. There's a lot of places you can do that. We could put the that in the chat um, because one of the things we get a lot is, hey, I'm starting a gym. Uh, is is 
what you guys do something that can help us. And yes, it does happen to be something we help you. We help people with that all the time. Um, and Brent Godwin is one of them. He's not far from me. He's in North Carolina, um, started his gym. You know, he's kind of like, it was kind of like in a soft opening phase and wasn't really sure what he was doing. We had to get his offers sorted out, you know, his, you know, marketing sorted out his systems and um, starting that at the right time, even though it was a little bit late, significantly better spot. So we just wanted to let you get, let you guys hear his story. We sell coaching and they understand that, hey, in order for you to be successful, that service, that coaching needs to be world-class, needs to be top-notch to the point to where people are always bringing their friends and family in. And that has been the biggest takeaway is how professional and how dialed in, not only the business side of things, yeah, but the coaching things, the coaching side of this, the coursework, the homework you have to turn in, the weekly calls, the small group calls, your individual touch points on that. That has been the biggest segue and that has probably been the most fun. Although it's, it's, it's humbling because you're being vulnerable, but that's what it takes in order for you to be world class. You have to be able to put yourself out there in order to run a world-class affiliate, to be a world-class coach, to have a world-class team behind you. And they have helped do that. And it has been absolutely wonderful. And I can't thank them enough. And if you're out there and you're wondering or on the fence of if you should sign up for Affiliate University, the answer is yes. I'm here to tell you, just sign up for them. I promise you, you will make your money back. You will get that return on your investment before the course is over. And if you keep implementing the strategies, the practices that they are telling you to do, that's just going to continue to compound in years to come. And you will be a healthy fit facility and affiliate, and you will continuously change the lives of your members, your clients, and your staff members along with yourself for years to come. So if you're on the fence about joining Affiliate University, just make the leap, do it, sign up, you will not regret it. And I promise you, you will be the best affiliate for doing so. Biggest sponsors, the, biggest, <laughs> biggest sponsors of the biggest biggest sponsors of the show are so best hour of the day. Our we sponsor self. man, Brent making me tear up. Not only you know what's unique about Brent, he, I mean, I don't have anything in common with Brent, nor does Katie, because we're level fours, but he passes level three, Fern. So you guys have a lot in common. He passes I don't have anything three, within common, you guys either, because there's only one flow master on this call. But so. oh, oh, that is oh. true. That, hey, a challenge, that's a challenge coin, is what that not is. A big, not a lot of comebacks <laughs> to that one. Oh. That's a good one. Hey, oh. you know what I was thinking about during the break? You know, a lot of people are probably listening and hearing us talk about the zone. Like, this is really hard. And it is. I remember giving the nutrition lecture, I think it was in Tampa. Maybe you were there, Katie. We worked a lot in the uh, Florida area together. And this guy, I remember he put his hand up. He's like, I'm a truck driver. And I was like, well, I like you go to gas stations these days, you can buy eggs. You could buy like these apples that are wrapped in saran wrap and you could definitely buy. Wow. Wawa's got it all, dude. Yeah. And yeah, I was I'm, like. Gas stations have upped their game. Yeah. I mean, eggs are like three eggs, right? So you could easily. Like, I was going to ask you guys too, like, what's your go-to three block meal, but like three eggs, an apple and a half technically, right. If you're doing three blocks and like nine cashews, there you go. Like the zone can be as challenging or as easy as you make it. But I remember I came back to the box and this guy, like three months later introduced himself. And I was like, he's like, Hey Jay, like, I was like, who are you? And I, I, I can't remember his name now, but he was like, you don't remember, like you told me about the zone and he had lost like all, like a hundred pounds in those three months. He, he just came back to see me because I was there for another level one. And he was like, you told me like, I can do this. And I did it. It yeah. was like, so I think like the zone is hard, but we should also let people know, like it can be very, very easy. I think it can be simple. Simple. Uh, sure. Right? Simple. So I, I don't, it wasn't necessarily easy for me, but, but right. it, simple. it was simple. The hard part is compliance. I mean, that, that, right. Like this is simple. Like you said, I used to do that all the time because we would work gigs in Florida and a lot of them I could drive to. And so we'd leave the seminar and I would go to the gas station and do, I mean, it's gross. James Hobart just posted something about this. I would do gas station, hard boiled eggs 
and like apple slices and, uh, you know, some mixed nuts or something. So you always have a choice on what you can do. Is it perfect? Maybe not, but who cares? Like you can always make a better choice. And, but yeah, I think the hard part is just compliance, just, you know, deciding that you want to do it and that it's important enough and just taking it one day at a time and doing, making good decisions one day at a time. And then at the end of whatever, a year, two years, you've, it's this massive life change for me. I'm talking about my experience. Um, but it's, yeah, it's consistency. I think more than anything that's that people struggle with. Right. So, uh, so with that, I have a couple questions. So obviously when we're talking about whole foods, we'll just hit the bullet points here because a lot of the point is just like people trying to wrap their brains around this, the level one, you know, they're, they're either testing for their level three, they're going to take their level one or need to retake their level one. Big bullet points in the the whole foods is, you know, good balance of macronutrients, meaning uh, protein, carbs, fat, good balance of vitamins. It's baked into the cake that if you eat whole foods, it gets pretty hard to overeat on carbohydrates just based on pure volume, which is what it's kind of calorically restrictive in nature because of that. Yeah. Um, and then people always fight about, okay, no sugar. Like, what does that mean? So two things clarify for the people in the back what we mean when we know when we say no sugar right and then also talk about like yes it is challenging however do it anyway yeah yes yeah, so no sugar no added sugar right i mean there's sugar in a, there's natural sugar in some of the foods that are in that whole foods list we know that we're talking about no added sugar or nothing to replace sugar <laughs> none of that cutting it out. And it's, so that's our prescription. But, but again, is it people are like, well, but I, I want this in my coffee or I need this as a snack or whatever. If you're adhering to the prescription for wellness, it's no sugar. If you're scaling the prescription, it, that that's a way to scale it. But when we say no sugar, we mean no added sugar. That's just hands down what it is. Does that mean you should never eat sugar again for the rest of your life? No, probably not, depending on what your goals are. But if you're talking about here's the prescription and what to know, no added sugar. Yeah, you you should not do that for the rest of your life because you'll largely be unhappy, right? So that's not what you we're have saying. No friends. Yeah, you'll I mean, have zero friends, right? Yeah. You'll be like Jason Ackerman, which is right. a sad a sad tale. Let me um, let me chime in on something. You're like, it's okay. Like, should it be hard? Like you ask Katie, and it's like, it's okay. Like, it's okay if your diet is hard. Like. I think I speak mostly for Katie. but like, we have a fat version of ourselves living inside of us. Like Every mine is making its way out. If I'm being honest <laughs> with you guys, like he's busted out. Right. But it's like, I wake up every, like my alarm goes off and I don't want to work out, but I'm in the gym or like down here at six 30 every single day or five days a week, every single day. I want to eat shit. Like I don't want to eat good. Like eating good is a decision I have to make every single, not even every day, every meal. Yeah. And it's like this idea and concept and belief these days that it's like, we need to coddle everybody and, oh, let's make it easy and let's be soft around you because we don't want to offend you by telling you, Shanisha, it's bullshit. Like your diet is probably going to be hard. Like if you don't want to be obese, it's going to be challenging. Like, yeah. And now Katie and myself both like, I've not lost a hundred pounds, but I've been down 30 pounds in the past. Like I can go out and have a meal and have cake or donuts and like the next day be back on it. But for mm -hmm. a lot of people, they can't do that. So if they cut out that sugar, it maybe stops that trigger or just teaches them what it's like. Or maybe like Katie said, wow, I realized I felt better. Like I've been on, you know, it's January 4th. I'm four days in, but it's like, I tried to stop eating a little bit of dessert every night, which I was doing. And what did I realize? I was like, oh, a little bit often led to a lot. And when I had a lot, I slept worse. And when I slept worse, it was harder to wake up. And when it was harder to wake up, I think it's it definitely is a compounding thing. Like you have neither of you have said anything, but I'm down two pounds. You know what I mean? That's fine. You don't have to compliment me on the show, but I'm down a couple pounds. I'm gonna skip right over that. And uh yeah. I preach, Katie, you're gonna fit in well here. You do fit in well here. Yeah, you, this is perfect. <laughs> There's two things, right? When we're talking about, we talk about this at the level two in the nutrition lecture about, you know, everybody kind of has a different relationship with food, whether it's emotional, different triggers. So 
yes. Are there ways to approach that differently per the person? Absolutely. Generally speaking though, Jay, like you were talking about, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. People, again, on a global level, people don't like to be uncomfortable. They just don't. They want to, it, you know, it's like things gotten a little soft potentially. And, but the bottom line is if nothing changes, nothing changes, right? I know that's, that's silly, but it's true. We've hit a new low when Nikki Sharp is busting my balls. For the record, <laughs> this hurts, Nikki Sharp. You were my favorite. You were my favorite. Demoted. <laughs> Um, she's she's not she's not lying though. The, the part of the, the point is that her feedback is accurate. With yeah. your haircut. It still hurts, nonetheless. Um. So so okay. So a couple things there. A difficulty is relative. No different than training. Fair. Right. So like Jay went on a little bit of a rant there about like it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. But let's put this in context. It's actually not. Does he have that thought as I'm sure Katie does. And as, as I'm sure I do for sure. However, saying no becomes significantly easier. No different than picking up the heavy barbell, right? Like you just got to put your reps in you and that's the deal, right? Choose it. Right. You just choose it and choosing your all yeah. that urge will in for, will be there for a long time. Saying no is what gets easier, right? Like the, the whole, that, and that's what I want people to take away from that. It's just like, it's a process as you work through. Yes, you're probably going to have those urges. Sometimes you give into them, sometimes you don't. But it's like kind of like, again, intensity is relative. Your implementation of this is relative based on the difficulty level. So Katie, you talked about like you started with the zone and you essentially scaled the zone and whole foods yeah. in small chunks in order to get there. And you, cause you kind of went to towards the, the end prescription, which is like eat whole, eat whole foods and keep intake to levels that support exercise, not body fat, which is the phrase that we refer to with regard to quantification yeah. of your intake once we start to move over to fit. So when we're talking about moving over to fit, whole foods gets us to well, or at least starts moving in some direction. But if I really want to optimize or maximize or be the best version of you, then we start to have to weigh and measure. And that's what you were doing. Um, so can you talk a little bit about, did you have problems making that transition with like with the actual quantification of your intake? Was that like, was that like a big burden for you for like, I mean, you know, I got to get a scale. Yeah. hundred percent. I would, the concept of putting food on a scale to, to eat the right. I was like, this is why would I do? Why, why do, do people do this? You know, like my sister's like bringing a food scale to restaurants and I'm like, this is wild. Um, but so, yes, I had trouble with it and I messed it up, quite frankly, because it took me a while to understand portions and grams and how to measure it correctly. And so I didn't hit the mark. So it was a huge transition for me. Having a support system and having somebody do it alongside of me was a huge help. I mean, massive. And I know not everybody has that luxury, depending on your lifestyle or what you got going on. But that was a huge help. Um, but yeah, but but honestly, again, since I sort of took the whole foods approach and the quantification approach. I basically did both of those things on a smaller level, one meal a day instead of like, okay, I'm just going to focus on whole foods for a couple of months. So I don't know if there's a right or wrong way to do that. That's just the way that I chose to do it. Oh no, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do that. I just wanted to bring to light that like, you, like even though it sounds like you went whole hog, like you did, like you, you scaled it. You just kind of started with both pieces yeah. Where some people start that way. Some people don't. So some right. people start with just weighing and measuring without talking about whole foods. Some people yeah, start well, with weigh whole foods without weighing and measuring and some people yeah, start right. yeah. the other way. Um, um, the uh, what, have, what other stuff have you played with? Like other type of uh, yeah. like nutrition protocols? I've, I've played with uh, intermittent fasting a little bit. I've uh, uh, tracked my macros for a long time. Um, a few years ago, well, it's probably been about four or five years, I did RP, uh, Renaissance Periodization. And I'm actually back on that now. I use the app to track my food and it's great. I love it. So, but that's all like on a sliding scale too. Like it, I'll, I'll track my macros and intermittent fast for six months. And then I, I'm like, all right, I'm going to let go of the fasting, but I'm still going to track my macros. So it's been a little bit of everything, um, depending on the season of life I'm in too. Right. And, and my goals, my current goals. So the thing that's probably been the most consistent for me is weighing or I'm sorry, tracking my macros, whether it's on my fitness pal or RP, 
keeping it, you know, 80% whole foods, right? It's, it's not hundred percent of the time, but that seems to be where my sweet spot is. Uh, sweet spot, meaning what? Um, balance. Like I'm, I'm, I feel good in the gym. yeah, I feel good in the gym. I can be really consistent and adhere to that most of the time. And I'm happy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not miserable. So, right, so the key, yeah. So the key there I think is, and I want to, I want to like make sure that we pulled out is because like what you found is what allows you to get the best level of compliance. Yes. And that, and I think that's where everybody needs to just like pump the brakes a little bit. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, that's like all it's like training. Like maybe you went three days last week and you went five days this week. Is it three days or five days? I don't know. It's like showing up is really the <laughs> answer and trying to do that consistently. And it's no different with, with nutrition. Uh, Cause I think people really get wrapped around the axle around that. And it's just, it's self-defeating, which is just like, give yourself some grace, yeah. allow for the mistakes. And then, and then what did you learn? Right. So like, because there's a, you, cause you, you, you gave a lot of different examples. And again, if we're trying to attach this to the level one, thinking about the, the common thread there is, you know, some degree of caloric restriction in combination with like insulin like trying to manage insulin levels and insul right. insulin sensitivity, right? Like all of those are kind of accomplishing those two mechanisms in just in a different fashion, which yeah. all goes back to like the sickness pieces, trying to bring, you know, hyperinsulinemia down or remove it altogether. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk for a second about zone versus macros. Cause like you said, back in the day, Katie, zone was it every level one, now, now the nutrition lecture touches on the zone, but we also touch on macros and fasting and paleo and, and keto even, et cetera. Um, and Brendan asked in the, in the chat, like, what are some of the main points to know about nutrition? Now, A, we can't give the answers to the level three, nor do we know them to be transparent, but I think nothing, you can't trump doing the zone for 21 to 28 days. Like, because you will learn so much and I'm, I'm positive. There's probably questions on the level three that are relative to like the zone and the experience of doing it. And look, I'm a huge fan of macros, but I think there's some pitfalls that we talk about in the nutrition lecture that aren't necessarily in the level one manual. Cause it came out before this whole macro push, which is like the, the beauty of the zone is that insulin glucagon balance, right? right. Every meal is properly zoned out. Any one of us watching myself included that have done the macros save their carbs. And yeah. I don't care. Like, yes, you hit your numbers for the day. There's probably nothing good happening inside of your body by eating five servings of cinnamon toast crunch. I don't care if you have a six pack, but that's probably not good. There is some sort of insulin spike happening. Yeah. I and mean, so I'm going to feel super happy. So that's not totally true. That, <laughs> that I'm and, and firm so. being happy is worth it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. However, <laughs> Like, until I yeah. like literally pass out the, uh, yeah. so real quick, Cody, can you bring up value the, in doing that? So it, this is where I think this can be helpful for people in this either a, like trying to get yourself wrapped around the zone or again, trying to get other people. Um, and while, well, uh, Cody, when you pull it, can you pull up the, the, the spreadsheet with all of the meals listed out there? I believe it's like page and this is back in the day, CrossFit journal 63. 21. This was all from CrossFit journal 21 um, that Nicole Carroll actually wrote. If I remember correctly, and she used to tell the story when she gave this lecture. You guys may have heard her talk about it at like a summit um, that she right started the zone. Go back to that one. So Nicole yeah. Carroll started the zone and she said by lunch, she was in tears. She was in yeah. full tears because she was she was trying to do the zone with like normal food. Not I say normal foods, processed foods. She tried to do, I remember her saying like a turkey melt and she had like a quarter of a bagel. Yeah. And she's like, this is not real. And it's like, like Katie said, and like Fern said, if you eat whole foods, you're going to feel way more satisfied and it's also better for you. So I, I'm no different than anybody else, meaning like I have resistance to virtually everything. So uh, I did the zone. I did the zone because my wife was just like, here's what you're going to eat. She's just like <laughs> fed me. But I tell you what, I don't know how you guys feel like the for some people, not everybody, some people want to know all the pieces, but like you don't have to know it. Like there's like in the book, entering the zone, I think 50% of the book is just recipes, mm -hmm. right? So like just go into the level one manual. There's there's meals here for, for weeks. Like you don't have to know any of like the right macro here. breakdown. I mean, like just literally just like do that meal and then you're well, good. Well, and I, I don't know about you guys, but like 
if I can pick a few staple meals, like I can eat the same meal. I was going to say most people dinner is like the variability, right? Like mix up the dinners or the protein you have at yeah, dinner or whatever, yeah. but like, find what works and just do it. I've been Everything. eating the same breakfast for seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Every, that's one of people's always like their first objections. Like, Oh, it's the same thing. It's like anyone listening. They, even people that have no consideration of their diet eat it. Like, well, it's taco Tuesday. We do pizza on Fridays. Like, you do the same meals 90% of the time. Yeah. I, I believe there was a, I think Rob Wolf might have brought this up in one of his early lectures. And if it wasn't him, then I, then, then I apologize. But I think he gave, I think the number is like the average person only eats like something between like 14 to 15 different meals, like consistently. Yeah. Oh, throughout I mean, like huge chunks of time, which is like, so it's, it's not like you need, you can go in and figure those out and then maybe reduce it. Now you're at like 12, right? So like breakfast is usually pretty consistent for everybody. Cause it's like the most control. It's like lunch. You either know where you're going to order from, or you bring it. Yeah. Dinner is the, usually the one that has like the most variation because it's, it's a more social thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I just wanted to bring that because I think, again, going back to the manual, like people need to go, people need to dive in there more. But like the answers are in there. It's like spoon, like quite literally and figuratively spoon fed to you. Just yeah. like just eat that. You don't don't even worry about the macro breakdown. Who cares? Like that's that's if you want to know the science, like if you just wanted yeah. to eat healthy, like just make that meal right there and forget any of the details about like what in what is entailed inside of eating that. And you would be well, that's uh, to piggyback on that. I think that's the nice part about it you know, in the level one manual, or if you want to dig even deeper, but like the work's been done for you, right? It's, it's all there. So yeah, if you want to dig in and know the science now, if we're talking about studying for the level three, I think that's something to study. And I don't know if you guys agree, but because I think we get that question a lot in the nutrition lecture about like, well, you know, but there's, there's carbs in this fat source, or there's fat in this protein source, like, how do we account for that? And it's like, he's already accounted for all of that, right? Like there's those hidden calories in there, but that's part of the zone prescription. And so I think people understanding that concept, because it's different than counting macros, right? Where like, if I put that I had eggs in my fitness pal, it's going to track the fat, it's going to track the protein, et cetera. And, and the zone prescription is like, it's even simpler than that. Like you don't even have to worry about all that stuff. You have to, there's a minimal amount of homework, right? So like anybody who's yeah. like, how, do I, how much do I have to figure this out? Like if you're a coach, it's the same amount of time and effort that you would need to learn the points of performance and the progressions, which for the record is not that damn much. Right. <laughs> Although but you got like, them wrong. You got them wrong. I was going right. to say, we talk about that. And he's it, still a flow master. Look at him. He's talk still about it. Listen, it's a comeback story. Everybody likes an underdog. <laughs> he's the, you one day there's going to be a movie like Rudy, it but it's going to be fun. Right? <laughs> it's going to end with him getting that challenge coin that, to be a flow that, master. That, that belt right there. The, um, <laughs> But no, and, but, and you know what? The, the crazy part too, Fern, is like we, we talk about this in, in the lecture. We have the hierarchy. What's at the foundation? Nutrition. Everybody wants to do a second workout. Everybody wants to do this and that. No one wants the zone. And that's really like what it's all about because you, you can't outwork a shitty diet. And I know just simply not doing the zone doesn't mean it's shitty, but I think the zone is eye-opening. I think if you truly consider yourself or want to consider yourself a world-class coach, CrossFit coach, you need to try the zone. It's it's part of the history of CrossFit and there's value there. Well, there is value. I don't know that you that you would do it, but like the 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 point is this is like I, would, it, what like, what's I the, wouldn't do it or these listeners wouldn't do it. Meaning like you don't have to do the zone. That's not the point, right? Like it's listen, if you want the like is it testable material? Like, yeah, you're gonna see some questions on it. You should learn it, just like you should learn about intermittent fasting and what are the mechanisms involved there. You should learn you know, about macros and, and like why it's designed that way. You should dive into RP. It's all a, it's all a learning process. Right. And I think this goes back to like, what is CrossFit's stance on nutrition? Cause this question came up and like, Hey, what, what, it, what's the stance on like, you know, how do you deal with people with eating disorders or body positivity? And, and here's the deal. Like there is no stance on that. Our stance is eat meats, vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar, keep intake, to levels that support exercise and not body fat so that we can avoid chronic disease to get to wellness and eventually quantify that in order to get to fitness. That's the stance, right? Nothing else, right? Like I don't, somebody correct me if I'm wrong here, but like, I don't believe there is any literature that really directly talks about 
body composition other than that it is a metric that you could measure to track your progress. But nobody's saying that like you should get to X, Y, or Z. Yeah, we no. use it as a metric in the in the sixth well fit um, for a metric that you would track for uh, for sick well fit in that lecture. But outside of that, we're not saying that you should look like anything. Yeah, that's right. Am I am I wrong? Nope. No, I don't think so. Well, well we, yeah, we just like you said, where it is on the on the continuum, it's it's certainly a correlate. It's, it's right? a metric, right? Yeah. Just like uh, it's like it's 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 something to know, but it's not the only thing. It's just like the. Uh, I think InBody nailed it when they have that little um, the little diagrams and they're like, this person's one, what is it? It's like 180. This person's 180, but they look totally different because just knowing your weight is like useless information in absence yeah. of other information. Your body fat is the same way. Like you could have super low body fat and be wildly unhealthy. Like that's yeah. a real thing too. Um, so I think keeping it simple and then bringing it back to CrossFit's prescription, which is just like, listen, whatever you're doing, it should support exercise, not body fat. You can do that. You can skin that cat a lot of ways. Like Katie has her story. Jay has her story. I have mine. Wait, if you're wait. listening to you this, Jay has. Do you say Jay has her story? You said yeah, you I were. A, you said you were a well-muscled female. Oh right, that's true. Yeah, I don't see gender. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, stance on juice diets. Listen, if it supports All exercise right, and not Take body fat, Gandhi and, over here. If it supports exercise and not and not and uh, and not body fat, then great. And if you That's health and if your health metrics go in the right direction, then great. But if it doesn't, That's then we have to talk about it. Back to the middle of the table, right? Like That's it. The salt shaker. Okay. All the things, then right. do it. Great. Right. If it I, doesn't, something needs to change. I we're gonna have EC on it, uh, Sinkowski. In a couple of weeks, right, Cody? I forget what week Cheeks comes on, but um, for programming and like for programming, yeah. Weeks. But I mean, she basically wrote this. I don't know, if, right? For for the still seminar staff, and now she's got some great stuff going with eight hundred grams. And I remember watching her give the nutrition lecture. People were just hammering her with questions, which <laughs> often happens during this. And she just kept saying, like, "Does it, you know, support body fat and you know lead to fitness? Like, cool." Like, do it. You want to drink juice all day? Does it make you healthier? Cool, right? But it's like, no one looks at it, like you said. That, can you give the analogy of that salt shaker? Because not everyone, like, we're probably the only people that understand what you I, I don't think I can do it as... Hearn can do it. So, I mean, Bosman is who, who I heard it from. Adrian Bosman. Yeah, yeah. He, like he, so he brought up this analogy, which is, hey, there, there's a, the three of us are sitting at a table, and I've put this salt shaker, and I've established, like, this is the center of the table. And then Katie decides, she's like, no, no. She's like, she moves a little bit closer. She's like, this is actually the center of the table. And if we're not paying attention, meaning like, you know, CrossFit's stance on nutrition, like that we have established that that is our stance as yeah. the center of the table, which is like, hey, eat for wellness. If you want to eat for fitness, you need to, you know, largely be dabbling in whole foods to avoid high consumption of sugar. And you should be eating such that it supports exercise, not body fat. And again, there's an infinite number of ways to do that. But when people start talking about other things mm -hmm. that are not related to health and quantifiable fitness, that is right? their distractions. They're moving the salt shaker away and talking about things that are not actually as relevant as people want them to be, right? There's those people's personal biases and we understand that. But I think it's incumbent on all of us as a community to understand what's happening. It's not, and it's not to say for the record that those conversations are not important, right? They're super oh, important yeah. conversations to have, but that's not our stance. Our stance is eat for wellness. And if you want to move towards fitness, you're going to have to quantify that because in world-class fitness and 100 words, that is the statement. Keep levels of, uh, keep intake to levels that support exercise, not body fat. And again, well, and that in itself is pretty hard to argue. Eat the right. food that your body is meant to digest and like function. Right. Eat it in the right amounts. I mean, what? Well, how can you argue with that? Very simple, you know. And and always at the at the seminars, people are like, well, what about this? This being, well, what about meal timing? What about post workout? What about? It's like you're not doing the basics. Like, yeah. put the fucking gummy bears down. A, you didn't work out that hard. You didn't. You didn't deplete your glycogen. You, you, well, you, let's play devil's advocate. Okay, cool. Is it moving you in the right direction? And right. are and are all of your metrics tracking in that direction? Like again, right. the, the, the salt shaker analogy is just like, right? You haven't measured any of that stuff. You don't have blood work to accompany that. You're not tracking your workouts enough. Like you're not tracking your sleep. You're not having a glucose monitor. Right? Like so, at that point, it doesn't matter. 
right? You're talking about something that sounds sexy and sounds cool, but at the end of the day, I'm still going to come back to the same answer and everybody should come back to the answer regardless of what your protocol is. Like, what is the outcome? Is the outcome better health markers, better fitness? That's it. It's like one, it, equate it to CrossFit, right? Like I want to muscle up. Okay, let's, let's talk about where you're at in your muscle up journey. Can you do, can you hang from a pull-up bar <laughs> yeah. or from the rings with active shoulders? No, I've never touched a set of rings. Okay, like let's bring it back to step one or the basics. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. the same thing with nutrition. Here's a question. And I think what Tiago is saying is like, is nutrition the most difficult part of the level one? And this kind of Fern kind of answered this. It's like, no, it's just that we're it's most so, controversial. We're certainly controversial, but it's just like you show up to the box and what are we doing? The fitness part, right? Like we're working out. And, and I think it's a mistake affiliates are making. We've established this. Nutrition is the foundation. Yet the only times we really talk about nutrition is maybe in someone's on-ramp and then maybe periodically with challenges throughout the year. Nutrition has to be a regular part of your classes. And that doesn't mean we do a 15 minute lecture at the whiteboard every Tuesday, but Hey, instead of your dumb question of the day, like what's your favorite movie, right? Like I those. Those. those are fun once in a while, but I'm saying like if two times a week, you're like, what'd you have for breakfast, Katie? What'd you have for dinner last night? Did you meal plan this week? Like we talked about this with Pat Barber, right? Like, did you get good sleep? Like just make it part of the culture of your box, yeah. you know, do a lesson plan. So the last seven minutes of your class, you have ample time. Hey guys, let's talk about some easy to get protein sources or Hey guys, let, let's talk about three easy meals. You can get at that Wawa down the street. Like nutrition has to be a part of the daily talk at your affiliate. It's setting the culture. I think, like you said, like, just like you would anything else. If, if you set the culture at your gym that, you know, everybody in your class gets corrected. Maybe, you know, that's the culture. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody gets cute. Everybody gets corrected. So it's just, that, that's part of the culture of our gym. It's the same thing with nutrition. We talk about food. We talk about nutrition, good choices, bad choices. You know, it's, it's part of the conversation. And depending on what their answers are, when you ask this question at the whiteboard, you can just shame them because peer pressure is a thing. <laughs> you know, and you said controversial. I don't think, I think it's only controversial because nutrition is like- Maybe not controversial. But it's like contentious. Contentious. contentious is a better word, right? But it's like, it's because it's we, we grow up and like most people are not back squatting, doing thrusters, doing pull-ups, right? Or at least getting critiqued and have a strong belief on it. Like, no, this is the proper way to do a pull-up. But we grow up and whether it's part of your religion or ethnicity, nutrition is, you know, no different, like we've said, religion, politics, like religion, politics, and nutrition, don't talk about it with family. But the, the, you know, the thing is, we just have that such a strong belief from, from birth. Like we're, we, you know, Fern's got two kids, we've got Madison and it's like, we're definitely doing something in her head with nutrition. Right. So it's like in 10 years, 15 years, she's going to have these strong convictions about it. And I think that's it. And I think we just, I'm, all fi I'm currently fighting my children over leftover Christmas cookies. Not, not that I can eat them, that, that they won't eat them at all hours of the day. They're trying so to. Yes, and that's why they're all going in the trash, probably like tonight. Roz does not see your kids as often as I do. Like she's not on social media as much, and I see your kids a lot. And we got your Christmas card, and Roz was like, "What is up with Fern's kids?" I was like, they're, "Oh, that's, they're, they're just like crazy." Goofy in the picture. There's, no, they're they're sociopaths, both of them. Oh, they don't know how to smile. They don't know how to smile, like in, Why in photos. Why is so normal though? What happened? Dude, they're uh, Jess is not. First of all, Jess is not normal. Oh, oh no, no, no. I, I'm going to throw this out there and I hope she's not she listening. She might be a sociopath too. Right. Not, she, she just would, happens to like me. Just as it will murder me, but she's more crazy than Fern. I'm putting it out there. Oh, I had no idea. Different. It's a different different crazy. But okay. if, I, if somebody was like, if, if, if I found out, if Fern was like, hey, just so you know, like, man, I didn't know this, but Jess killed like 20 people that she just couldn't stand. <laughs> I'd be like, oh yeah, I, I, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Turn here, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. But it's so like, the, I think the whole point of this is like, you know, everybody should dive back into that material. There's a ton of good stuff there. It never hurts to revisit it. But keep remember, keep the salt shaker at the center of the table. And when people have yeah. questions, be, be I would I would argue like be very wary of giving very specific answers because that's generally going to be problematic or incorrect. 
and then talk about like the outcome, talk about the principles, which is if you look at most of the, everything that we've talked about thus far with regard to different protocols, like they're all based on very similar principles. Yeah. All right. Last, last thing let's chat about, and this is how we wrap up. Well, not anymore, but we used to wrap up the nutrition seminar supplementation. This comes up a lot, like pre-workout, pre-workout, creatine, protein. It's, I remember one time, like giving this lecture and like, someone's like, what about a uh, protein? I'm like, well, can you shake a tree? And does protein fall off of it? And they were like, no, I was like, then don't eat it. Right. But it's the same thing. Like Fern has been saying, like, like salt shaker, is it helping? But CrossFit, there's one supplement that we recommend and that's fish oil. Right. So what's the ratio? Most Americans are at what? 30 to one omega six to three. I want to say like 20 to one. to one. Right. And we want that to be closer to two to one. So supplementing with fish oil is ideal. Uh, three grams of EPA and DHA. We don't have an allegiance to a specific fish oil. Personally, I take the thorn stuff. Do you guys take fish oil? I yeah, do. I, I take I uh, the capsules. I did the liquid for a while, and I got I like, like the liquid. Yeah. I like. I've done. I do driven and um and thorn. Like I'm pretty religious about two supplements. The fish oil is one of them. Vitamin D is the other one. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys, if you have an affiliate, you're not doing the thorn dispensary. Hit us up. We'll help you get started with that. But um. Uh, okay, yeah. so here's one. I'll, I'll put both of you on the spot, and then we'll put this challenge out to the to the listeners. Can either one of you properly pronounce? No. no. <laughs> I didn't even get the question. No, I, I tried <laughs> once. Joe DeGain once challenged me. It was like my second nutrition lecture. And he was like, I'll give you an approved advance if you say the EPA and DHA. And I tried to sit you there can, and learn it. You and can I properly get it. pronounce them. Acid, something hexagon. Yeah. I can't uh, ever remember. Yeah. It's, uh, so for the listeners out there, if you can, so those EPA and DHA, those are the components of omega 3 fatty acids. If you can pronounce both of those words, send, send record a video. Get- Discount for affiliate you? Yeah. I don't know about that. I'll off. give you I'll give you <laughs> I'll give you the shirt off Jay's back. Oh, um, not this flannel. We're missing a button. Yeah, nobody can say that. That's not that's not even a real word. Ec- we, what? Yeah. And we're not talking about alpha linoleic. We're talking about that one, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember least, trying to al- alpha linoleic is not hard. That the bottom two like is are the, like who who can say that? So like, let, let, let's give a little summary though of something like the way we eat, even if you try to eat really healthy meats, vegetables, nuts, seeds, like if you go out to eat once in a while, if you cook with oil, you're getting omega-6. You need omega-6 in your life. It's, it's, you need some inflammation in your body. It's how you heal. It's how you recover. However, most people are eating in such a way that six to six to three, omega-6 to omega-3, it's 30 to one ratio. Now that does not mean you can buy a bottle of fish oil pound it and get your ratio down to two to one. I think Chuck Carswell will tell you, you can't do that. <laughs> he might try it, but yeah. really it's about let's, let's try to limit it by eating good quality foods. And then let's supplement with some fish oil. And I can tell you personally, when I'm not taking fish oil, I feel it. So I try to, I try to take the three grams a day. Um, the thorns great for me. Cause it's like four pills. Um, I, I do find the, the liquid you can get it easier um, but fish oil don't it, for you listeners, like don't go on Amazon right now and buy the cheapest fish oil because you pay for what you get. All right, Katie wrap us up. Oh, we got a question. No, it's As, not. yeah, it's hard. Well, here you go. Um, I'm not sure how to say your name, well, but yeah, sorry. Go ahead. You answer Katie. No, I wasn't going to, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I, it's hard and not just, I mean, that's a specific example, but um, I've had, people, we, I think Jay, you were there. We, we did a seminar in Miami where somebody was talking about the cultural importance of food in Mm -hmm. their family, socially, uh, religion and and things like that. It is hard. It can be very hard to talk to clients or family members about. And, um, again, I think it just goes back to it. You don't, maybe you don't have to make this massive overhaul change. That's going to make somebody feel like they're not representing their their culture or whatever but you can always make a better choice right if if, how can we take what we've got and what's important to us and make it a better choice and so i think just meeting people where they're at is just is the way to start with folks yeah i mean speaking of ethnic you know how hard it is to zone gefilte fish i don't nope fucking hard here's the thing 
How can I be softer introducing the concepts of eating better? Here's, here's the true answer. Can you be softer? Well, I think what he's saying is like, how can I, how can I introduce these How do you concepts? slowly, how do you like. But like not feeling like I'm over. This is what it comes down to. Everyone listening, you lead by example. Right? Doesn't matter if you're level three, level four, or flow master. If you coach other human beings in CrossFit, you need to show them that you are willing to do this. You don't want to. It's like we talk about this all the time, Katie, in the nutrition lecture. Like, hey, if if your first CrossFit coach that you you found CrossFit, and you go to the box, and you're like, man, I'm struggling with these thrusters. How do you do thrusters? And they're like, whoa, I don't do thrusters. Yeah, you'd be like, well, I'm not gonna learn from this guy. Right. Yeah. Same holds true. Even more important with your nutrition, whether you're doing the zone or keto or macros or just eating paleo, you know, and you have a cookie once in a while, or you have, you go out and have a Coca-Cola. That's okay. Show the people like you've learned how to implement balance in your life. And 80% of the time you do these things, right. Right. That that's what it's all about. If you, that's where you start. Yeah. I'm going to try to say this person's name, how tarophilia MX. Right. Do it yourself. Make it so obvious that you do it. Don't be obnoxious about it. But, you know, have your Tupperware of zone food or post a picture. You know, we're all on social media. Your your members see it. Post your Saturday night food. Do those types of things and your members will start to do it. They will start to ask you questions because when you're the coach that looks great, performs great, looks like they have balance in their life, they're going to want more of that. Yeah, you want to be able to walk through it with them a little bit. Right. And whether it's, Hey, I don't know where to start. I'm really overwhelmed. Um, I mean, cause this is where I was, I was like, I feel like I'm too far gone. This isn't, I, I, I just, this isn't going to work for me. So to have somebody say, I know it feels really overwhelming, but here, here's, here's what I did. And here's what was a really great approach for me. I started small. I scaled this. I just took it one meal at a time, or maybe it's somebody who, um, you know, has tried something in the past and they, it didn't work for them and, and they fell off the wagon and now they need, they need you to say, Hey, I I've fallen off the wagon too. Like this is not a perfect system, but here's what I did in order to try to, to get back on track or whatever, like walking through that with them is so important. And yeah, if you haven't done it and you don't have that credibility, it's going to be really hard to, to help somebody else. Absolutely. Anything Fern? You're muted. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, no, I agree with all of that. You know, the, so I think the other, I think the other approach there, if somebody's looking, if that doesn't, if that doesn't tickle somebody's fancy, that they're like, Hey, I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing it that way. Then the other option is just like teach people what teach them like the smallest little piece of information at a time. Mm -hmm. Guys like this is what protein is, you know, like, Hey, if, if you were like on the fence about, uh, you know, bring in your lunch. Here's are some good containers that you could buy that are like easy to wash and all that kind of stuff. Like just like wade into the, into the shallow end first and like slowly give people a bunch of information, but don't like, you don't have to preach all the yeah. time. You can just give information which people can do with it, what they will. And I think that can be an alternative approach depending on what, what type of coach you are, what the gym vibe is, all that kind of stuff. Both work super, super well, depending on, who the audience is. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, you know, going back to this guy's question and I'm sure other affiliates feel this way. Like I think oftentimes we do these nutrition challenges, which are all in, like it, you, you got to go hundred percent. Like it's balls to wall. I see these people doing things like 75 hard now and other nutrition challenges. I'm like, what are you doing to set these people up for success on day 76 or day 31? And I, I I'm going to, I think taking a page from Katie's book, what if more affiliates said like, Hey, the 30 day breakfast challenge for 30 days, we want you to eat a healthy breakfast. Here's what constitutes a healthy breakfast. Right. And I think naturally people will bleed into, well, I can carry that over and be like, well, maybe I'm going to do lunch today. Right. Like give them these little small wins. EC used to say like, Hey, how about you wake up and have a glass of water? Like nutrition is one of those things, like, especially when you've done it. And I probably am very guilty of this. Like it's hard. And I know it's hard and I do it anyway, where I don't, not everyone's like this. So, Hey, cool. What's the lowest hanging fruit that we can give to you to make you feel successful that you can continue to do. 
fill up your water bottle and put it by your bed. And when you wake up, drink that. That's a win. Like start small, start easy, give these people wins and you will see it cascade. You will see them do more. And nutrition is one of those things that creates tremendous retention at your box. Because when people dial in their nutrition, they feel better, they look better, and they relate that to being a member at your affiliate. All right, Katie, leave the listeners with something profound. Oh my gosh. Profound. Um, okay. Off the cuff, whether this is for you as a, as for yourself, something that you're trying to go through and make yourself better, or you're trying to help your clients or you're studying for your level three, wherever you're at. Um, you, it's not, you're not going to always be motivated to do this. And we touched on this a little bit. If you make it part of your lifestyle, if you prioritize making better decisions more than shitty decisions, if that's a priority in your life, do that one every day. Just do that every day. Take it one day at a time. Don't wait till you're motivated. If you're feeling unmotivated, don't scrap it. Just do it anyway. Because those take, you know, thinking of big, huge, long-term goals Here's where I want to be six months from now. Here's where I want to be a year from now. Here's what I want to weigh for my vacation, whatever. That's very daunting. That feels huge. If you think about one day at a time making better choices than not, that leads to some pretty epic shit over the long haul. And it's and that makes it simpler, I think, and, and easier to, it's more palatable, you know, it, one day at a time and uh, just stay disciplined. You know, if you want to make a change, do it, decide to do it and just do it, but just take it one day at a time. And if you have a bad day, no problem. You're one meal away from the next good choice and, and it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, I don't know if that was profound enough, but I got found enough for me. Perfect. Thank you, Katie Hayes. Thank you guys. Always.